G'day Legends, I hope you're all amazing. We're on the Fender Tone Master Pro again today, and I wanna show you the editor, I wanna build some sounds, and I wanna answer some of your questions. I do wanna say a massive thank you to everybody who checked out the first video that I did with this. I was pretty blown away with the response to everybody who ended up subscribing to the channel or signing up to my Patreon, or even going and checking out some of the music that I make with my band Ragdoll. Thank you again. I really, really appreciate it. And there were lots of great questions on there that I want to get to. The first one being, is there a software editor? Yes, there is. I'm using it at the moment and it basically mimics what you get on the touchscreen one-to-one. So if you're used to working on the unit, uh, as you can see, it looks pretty much identical. And this is really handy for me when I'm making a video because it's a lot easier to use the screen capture feature on my Mac than it is to set up another camera and try to get a good angle on the actual unit. So yes, there is a software editor. Uh, a few other things, I don't have the Fender FR cabs. I really would like to try them. I actually didn't even know about them until the entire kind of product launch. So that's something I would like to check out. I really like the way they look and I've heard some clips where I like the way they sound. Uh, a lot of people wanted to know what that little melody was that I keep playing in my video. The <laughs> That's a ragdoll song called Heaven Above. And the other question which got asked quite a bit was, can you turn the tap tempo indicator light off? A lot of people thought it was really annoying. You can, and the way you do that is you come up here into the settings tab and you can see that you've got a bunch of options here for preferences, IO, foot switches, EQ, and the mixer. So if you go to the foot switch tab on there, you've actually got an option on there for the tap LED. You can have it on so that it's only activated when you press on it, or you can just turn it off. So I'm gonna turn it off because a lot of people seemed turned off by that thing being on. The other thing that came up, a lot of people wanted to hear it with a Strat or a single coil guitar and some cleaner sounds on there. I spend like 99% of my life in the insane distortion category of guitar playing. So I figured it might be nice to pick up the Strat and try some clean amps. Uh, with clean sounds, what I generally find is choosing the right cab or cab IR is really important. So I've got the deluxe reverb dialed up at the moment and I was pretty stoked to see that there is a factory EV IR in here. So this one by 12 mega EV, I really like it with the SM7B mic, what about half an inch from the cap edge, bit of low cut and high cut in here on axis and I guess you just heard the clean sound so let's hear it again on the neck pickup. <laughs> That 63 spring reverb convolution is pretty awesome as well. If you're not familiar with what a convolution reverb is, essentially it is a reverb impulse response. So you can use the same technique that you use to capture cabinet impulse responses to capture reverbs. You just need a much longer impulse response time. Uh, I like in here as well that they've got the dwell and tone controls on there, but that one is super wet on there. It does the surf thing, you know, this wouldn't really be a proper Fender amp model if it didn't also have some nice Fender reverbs in there, especially the springs. So that one is really, really cool. That's something that got asked as well about the spring reverbs 
and the convolution reverb. So that's one of them. Sounds pretty sweet. There are a bunch of other reverbs in here as well. I've got the large plate at the moment. I'll scroll through a few of the other reverb options in there because you've got stuff like cloud reverbs, celestial reverbs, and halls. <laughs> Nebula reverb set up for an octave down is probably my favorite pitch shifted reverb in there. You can of course combine that with other effects, for example using the auto swell delay into the nebula. I could add the cloud reverb in there as well and really really stack these up and get ambient. This should sound pretty awesome. of space for some creative effects in there. You can also route things in parallel if you want to. We'll talk about that in just a second, but first I want to talk about some more delays. The stereo space delay kind of does the Roland space echo thing and you've got multiple pages of parameters in here. You can even set like the record level and the bass and treble level in there. You can add some tape noise or not have tape noise if you want. There's wow and flutter for modulation as well. Uh, stock settings on this, like a lot of stuff, sounds pretty decent. <laughs> I took a look at the Stereo Memory Man delay in my first video with this. One thing that I didn't notice at the time that I have noticed subsequently is when you engage this, they've actually mimicked the dry behavior 
of the pedal so it kind of messes with your dry signal. I like that, but there's actually no way at the moment to disable that preamp behavior. So even if you say turn the mix all the way down on this and engage it, there's quite a big difference between the bypass tone and the tone with the pedal on a mix at zero. <laughs> suggestion for an improvement in this particular block having the ability to bypass the preamp while I really appreciate the authentic behavior one nice thing about digital platforms is that you can go beyond what the originals did so if you just like the tone of the delay but you don't want it to mess with the overall mix you can do that I mentioned parallel effects routing before so I'm going to replace this with the studio delay over here so let's add that and then if I come over to the instrument section over here you can see I've got all the different routing options on here so I can have one parallel chain multiple parallel chains I can have the mic input and the main instrument input processed totally separately in there let's just go for parallel number one in here and you can see I can drag these blocks now onto parallel chains. Furthermore, you've got a kind of input mixer and splitter and an output mixer for this parallel chain. So what I can do is I can choose where, you know, basically the signal gets routed. I'm just gonna leave this one at stock because I want both blocks to get the same signal. But over here, what I can do is I can play around with the levels and the panning between them. So for example, if I had two different delays and I wanted one delay on the left, one on the right, I could do that. I might actually just do this. I'll pan them very slightly left and right, but I'll leave the levels the same. And then you'll be able to hear reverb slightly to one side and delay slightly to the other side. Let's try that. <laughs> One thing that I really appreciate in there is that you can add those blocks in parallel and you don't have to say set one to 100% mix just to get it to play right with the overall gain staging in there. They must have some kind of auto gain staging happening in there because you can see there the mix on these two blocks are both not at 100% yet when I bypass them I don't get more dry signal popping up. So that's kind of nice in there and I think that adds one less layer of complexity for people who are new to modeling in here. You could of course do the same thing with say the pitch block, just add two voices in there and create a stereo detune. I should probably do that. Okay, I have a pair of chromatic pitch shifters placed in parallel to one another. One other thing if you wanna do kind of fine adjustments on here is you can just click on the knob and then use this kind of slider on here. So let's get the pitch here to around minus nine cents. You know what, minus 11 is totally fine to start with. And this one I will go positive. So we'll go somewhere around nine to 11 cents over it. I don't think you can enter numerical values at the moment. That's one other thing. I would like to see implemented. Let's just go with 12 cents there. So just a very, very small amount of pitch shifting on each side. Then with the output mixer, I'll just pan them each hard left and hard right. And I have created a dual detune. Let's check it out. <laughs> This brings me to another question that was asked quite a bit. I actually did cover it really briefly in my video, but it's with foot switch assignments. Let's say I've got that dual detune that I've created in here, and I just wanna press a single foot switch in the effects mode 
to bypass both blocks. I can do that fairly easily. If I go to foot switch assign over here, let's just say I'm gonna assign it to this bottom left foot switch. I can then select the assignment type. So it's just gonna be a simple on and off. And then I can select both of these blocks at the same time. I can just confirm that. I can assign a color on there. I can assign a custom label or a switch and I'm good to go. So now if I come out of this, I'll use the physical foot switch on there. The default name is just a multi, but I could name it like Jewel Detune or something. I'll be able to turn these on and off at the same time. <laughs> Another thing that I can do with the foot switches, which again, I did mention in my first video, but I got a specific question about effect parameter ramping. So can you set up a foot switch that takes a particular parameter in a block from one value to another? You can, you can do that fairly easily. I've got the blues maker drive in here. Let's just have a listen to what it does to the clean sound I've got set up. <laughs> Let's do this. Let's go back to our foot switch assignments down here. This foot switch, I'm just going to hit plus and I'll make it a parameter change and I'll just select the blues maker. In fact, I could select multiple parameters in here if I wanted to, but we'll just do this drive at the moment. I can select the gain, the tone, the volume, or the version. Let's make it the gain on there. And the activated value I'll make to have more gain. Let's have it up quite high. And the deactivated value I'll just set kind of low around 24%. So I can again assign a name to that and a color, but I'm not gonna do that. I'll just show you this. If I hit the foot switch, you'll see the gain control change and the editor changes pretty much in real time, which is awesome. So check that out. <laughs> Grab the PRS DGT, we're gonna hear some absolute filth now. Before we dive into this preset that I've put together and I've actually shared in the cloud, we should talk about IR importing and sharing on the cloud. So come down to this little kind of speaker icon over here. You can literally just drag and drop an impulse response on here and it will load it into the IR manager. So I just loaded two of my free IRs. You can get these for free, just check the video description. If you come up here to this little cloud, you can see uh, you've got featured presets. There's kind of nothing in here. There's artist presets popular. So I imagine this is gonna get populated over the next weeks and months. I did see something over on the gear page where a Fender rep said that they will not be charging for artist presets. So if you're excited about seeing Fender's pretty big range of artists do some presets for this thing. It's nice to know they won't be like a paid add-on. So you can see you've got your download section, genres, all that kind of stuff. Uh, I've shared a few presets over here myself, so you can grab some of these if you're using a Tone Master Pro. Audition them, download them. Uh, you know, if you've uploaded presets and you want to unshare them, you can just delete them. But I will show you these presets over here. So. IR loading, pretty straightforward. Preset sharing with the cloud, pretty straightforward. I also saw that at the moment, if you wanna do backups, it's only via the cloud. Again, a Fender rep did say that they wanna add SD card functionality to that, which is nice because having a physical backup is always awesome. Mr. Whippy's going by at the moment, so uh, let's just take a second. <laughs> Fun fact, the ice cream machines in Australia play green sleeves as the main tune, which my American wife finds incredibly fascinating. So uh, let me know what tune the ice cream trucks play in your neighborhood and we'll move right along. This preset at the moment, I've got the small hall reverb for some ambience. I've got my free LTTV Mix 7 cab IR, low cut at 80, high cut at 8K to adjust these. You click them and you use the slider. I would love to be able to enter these values numerically on here. That's another thing. I would like to see added as a feature going forward. I've got the Mark II C Plus model in here dialed up at the moment. And 
I had a look at this really quickly in my first video, and I mentioned that it sounded like it was modeled with the fat switch on. I missed that there is another page where you've got all the switches, and I was actually correct. The treble shift or fat switch is engaged by default. Uh, I've turned it off here. Bass shift is off. Deep is on, lead bright is on, the graphic EQ, as it should always be for these kind of boogies, is on at the moment. But I'll let you hear some of the options, actually. I'll turn the bright and the deep off, and then I'll kick them in so you can hear what they do, and then we'll hear the difference between having the treble shift in and out. I like the treble shift in for leads, and I like it out for rhythm. <laughs> custom wire in here, which I actually wasn't using. I don't have an expression pedal hooked up at the moment, but I did demonstrate some wire tones in my other video. Phase 90 with just a speed at minimum sounds super thick on there. I guess this is just a flat boost, kind of looking like an MXR micro amp. And then I've got some foot switches assigned in here to engage the various effects. I can kick the treble shift in and out. And then this foot switch here, I've used as a multi assignment. So what do I actually have going on here? So when I kick this in, it kicks in the boost and the tape echo at the same time. If I wanted to, I could have it kick in some extra stuff. For example, in the 2C+, Plus, I could have it activate the treble shift that we were just talking about in there, or I could have it activate an extra block or turn one amp off and another one on if I wanted to do seamless amp changes in there. So uh, that was something that was asked about. I know we talked about the multi switches in there. There's no kind of scenes or snapshots functionality at the moment. I think it would be pretty cool to see that. That feels like something that should be like a standard feature on most you know, expensive modelers like this is. This is in the same kind of price range as a QC and a Helix. So something along the lines of snapshots or scenes. Again, that's something I would personally like to see. And if Fender are serious about developing this and listening to their users based on, again, that gear page thread that I was seeing, uh, the reps seemed really active and were kind of taking on people's advice and suggestions, which is always very, very promising to see. Anyway, that's the Mark II C+. I have shared that preset. If you want to try it out, you can grab my free IR as well. I've got some other presets in here. One was a Plexi. So this is the British model, which I like a lot more than the 800 model in there, but I paired it up with two cab IRs. I'm using the EV. So this is another thing you can do with parallel routing. I've got the same cab, but one has a 121 mic, the other has an SM57, and then I've panned them slightly left and right in there. So let's have a listen to what this smooth plexi sounds like. <laughs>
Bit of feedback generator on there, either the ODR OneDrive or the TubeDriver model as well, if you want to get it super dark and get a bit of that EJ thing going on, you know, I'm in no way qualified to say I can play like Eric Johnson at all, but I don't know, Eric is a Fender artist, maybe at some point we'll see some Eric Johnson Fender Tone Master Pro presets. Okay, this is a super fun tone that I like to try dial in on just about any modeler because you can kind of get a Rockman style tone just by stacking some EQs and compressors. So I've got the parametric EQ, and one thing about this is it's kind of barely a parametric EQ, you can change the mid Q and frequency but you can't do that with the treble and the gain. So I'm guessing these are shelving filters uh, at set frequencies in there. If you're gonna call something a parametric EQ, in my opinion, you should be able to adjust those things or have them as peaking filters as well. Also, I'm not super sold on having this skeuomorphic pedal style thing for a parametric EQ. I would love to see some of this space on the unit be devoted to actually seeing a graph of what's happening. Nevertheless, an EQ into the Studio Comp. Uh, another thing that the Studio Comp doesn't seem to have at the moment is makeup gain. So I'm using this EQ over here for some makeup gain. I've got the Dimension Chorus on mode three, which is my favorite mode on the real pedal and a bit of the small hall. And then I can kick in some ping pong delays. So this sounds super bright and does the 80s thing pretty well. <laughs> Another high gain preset while we're here. I think the 5153, you can kind of tell there's been a little bit of extra love put into this particular model. Uh, it's my favorite high gain amp in here. And this is pairing it again with my free IR, a little bit of the hall reverb. And then up front, I've got a clon as a boost or a phase 90. I've assigned these to foot switches as well. You can see uh, the phaser. I've actually set up a switch here, which is a multi, which will let me increase the amount of gain on the amp. And then over here, I've set up this cut control. Uh, I can't even remember what that is doing. What's this doing? Uh, it's using the Mythic Drive. That's right. So this is going to increase the amount of treble coming from the Mythic Drive. So uh, let's have some fun with this one. <laughs> And then I've got this lead foot switch down here, which kicks in a bunch of stuff. I think it kicks in the echo and the clon style drive in there for me. So again, rather than have a lead scene, you just assign it all to one foot switch. <laughs> anyone interested as well, the way I've set up that tape echo is I've got a quarter note delay on the left channel, a dotted eighth note on the right channel over here. Uh, any more, I've just turned the record level down a bit, played around with the wow and flutter as well to add some modulation, but pretty straightforward. Another thing which would be really cool to see added either on the unit or on the software is the ability to save your favorite blocks. So say you dial in a tape echo that you really like and you save it to a preset to be able to take that and just load it up in any other preset. And again, that's something that may already exist and I may just be an absolute moron, in which case feel free to tell me in the comment section below, but that feels like something that would be really cool to have added in there. So yeah, I think they did a pretty good job with this 5153 Stealth. And again, using it with one of my IRs that I'm super comfortable with is 
pretty important for getting a sound that I really, really enjoy. And I'll share those presets in there, the Mark II C+, the Plexi, this Chungus preset as well. Uh, actually, they're already shared, so you can go and grab them and try them out. We've covered so much stuff in this. There were a few other little things, and I wrote them down so that I don't forget them all the time. So uh, my IRs, you can grab them. I mentioned at the start of the video that Ragdoll song, Heaven Above, if you want to check it out. Seamless switching I demonstrated in the first video that I did. There's no kind of screw underneath the unit or anything like that if you wanted to, say, mount this like you do a Roland SPDS or something. Uh, that is not something I would consider essential for a floor modeler, but I know some people are going to use this kind of like a workstation where you set it up on a stand and you use a MIDI controller. It does have MIDI in and out. Uh, what else have I forgotten? Ah, the effects loops. Okay, let's take a look at adding a stereo loop. So one really cool feature is that the first two loops are kind of relay switching loops. So they are before the AD converter. So you want to put a fuzz pedal in there or something that's sensitive to your guitar input. You can do that, but then loop three and four, you can use as mono loops or one stereo loop. So I'm going to go to this little preset that I put together. So what am I using? The Vibro King, a bunch of fun stuff in there. And I'm going to bypass this plate reverb. I've got an Eventide H90 sitting in the loop. So let's do this. Let's add an effects loop. So you have the option to add effects loop one, two, three, or four, or the stereo loop over here. I've got the black hole and the crystals algorithm loaded up. This sounds pretty wild and pretty ambient. And uh, I'll let you hear how it gain stages everything. It's pretty good. You don't really lose signal or anything like that. <laughs> So that covers the effects loops. I was also asked about the feel. This is something that's so hard to talk about on here. I feel like it's one of those things that if you don't notice it, that's a good thing. I wouldn't say this feels better or worse than many other things that I've tried. The input and output latency seems pretty good and kind of pretty standard. You know, most of these devices are going to be using similarly specced AD converters, and of course, it's not just about the AD converter. You've got to use uh, analog circuitry around that and get it right. But you know, it's low noise. <laughs> the amps sound like amps. The effects sound like effects. I think that's about as much as I want to say with that. I think whether you're using a real guitar cabinet, an FRFR, or you're playing on in ears, is going to have way more of an impact on the overall feel than you know some specs with the AD converters. But that's just my opinion there. Bass amps, uh, good question. I mean, there's a basement, right? Like what else do you need in your life over here? But uh, in terms of like the half stack selection, these are all guitar amps. There's combo amps, which are basically still all guitar amps as well. You do have right at the end, I think if you go into amp heads, you've got a studio preamp and a tube preamp, which you could use for DI bass tones in there, but there's no SVT. Uh, there's kind of no standard selections for bass players. So again, bass players kind of get the short straw when it comes in here. I'll be very keen to see if there's an update soon that adds some dedicated bass amps, because I feel like bass players would really, really like this. A lot of the time, you don't need complicated stuff for bass tones. You need like a kind of solid amp and cab tone. There's parallel routing, so you could do the clean, dirty thing. There's some compressors in there and some tube preamps and uh, a lot of fun effects as well. So yeah, that seems like something which I'm going to guess they're going to add it. But again, it's up to Fender to prove to people that they are going to be serious about supporting this. What else can I tell you all about this? Someone wanted to know about the fuzz tones in here. So let's say replace this Fender Pugilist distortion with something fuzzy in here. What do we have for fuzzes? So we've got uh, the big green fuzz, the big horn fuzz, the germanium and silicon round fuzz, and a vera fuzz. There's an octave fuzz as well. We've got to hear this. So the good old trick with an octave fuzz is roll your tone control down, play on the neck pickup, and does it do the weird synth thing? <laughs>
You get a little bit of that kind of volume control cleanup with something like the round fuzz. I really like that that big muff model on there has a mids control, which can kind of change the overall tone and texture quite dramatically. That's a really good example, in my opinion, of staying kind of true to the sound that you can get out of real analog gear while expanding on it using the modern features and functionality of digital modeling. Again, something like the memory delay in there and the tape delay, I'd love the ability to just bypass or engage the preamp. A cool thing would be that if you wanted to use just the preamp section of one of them, you can just turn the mix down and you've got it. Or if you just want the preamp sound, on the delay itself. And, you know, I use stereo delays after the amp and cab a lot. So having the kind of center dry signal not get messed up is pretty important to me. Uh, some extra functions on the editor would be cool. For example, being able to enter numerical values. And aside from that, hopefully I answered some, most of the questions that people had from my initial video. Again, I really appreciate people taking the time to check out that video and everything else that I've got on my channel. A big thank you to Heath at Fender Australia for getting one of these units out to me. Like I said in my first video, this unit was sent to me and I get to keep it. So I'm gonna do some more videos with it. If you've got questions for future videos, let me know in the comment section below. And if you wanna come and join my Discord community, that is linked in the video description as well. Otherwise, have a great day, be good to one another, and I'll see you next time.